Okay, welcome back. Um, this is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and this is question number four from the International A Level at Excel, January 2021, Pure Mathematics P2 paper. And here we have a question um, about binomial expansion, where we have to expand this bracket and find the first three terms in ascending powers of x. And we've got to give each term in a simplified form. Um, P is a constant here. So we can just use the binomial expansion method, uh, the NCR method as it's called, it's known as, and you're going to have the first, I, I like to put three brackets here, the first bracket I like to use for the coefficient, the Pascal triangle coefficient, we use the NCR button for, the second term and the third term, that's for that. The second bracket I like to use for the term in here, which is going to be 2, and the third term, the third bracket I like to use for this term, which is px. So here I've got to have, um, you know, ncr, ncr. So n is six, and we start with six zero, and six one, and six two. Okay, so we always start with the the number, the power over here goes in the top here, and then you start from zero, one, and two, and we want to have ascending powers of x. So we're going to have 2 and px in each of these brackets here. We want the x to be in ascending powers. So I'm going to start with this with 0, and then 1, and then 2. And then these have to be in descending order, starting from the highest power, which is 6. So this is going to be 6, and this is going to be 5, and this is going to be 4. And you should realize that these two will always add up to give you that number on top. 0 plus 6, 1 plus 5, 2 plus 4. And the power on the other bracket will always be the same as the one in the lower number here. So 0, 1, and 2. So we can just make sure that everything's correct. Now, uh, anything, you know, um, with the 0 in this point part would be 1. So 6, zero, zero, six C0 zero is 1. 2 to the power of 6, that's 64. And anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this is going to be 64 for the first term. Then you're going to have 6c1, which is 6. 2 to the power of 4, 5 is 32. And you're going to have times px. So we're going to have 6 times 32, which is 180, plus 12, which is 192 px. And then we're going to have 6c2. Now 6c2, if you're not sure, you can just use your calculator. 6, shift, this button over here, NCR, and then 2. And it gives us 15. So this is going to be 15, the coefficient here is 15, and 2 to the power of 4 is 16, times, you're going to have p squared times x squared. Don't forget to square both of these. So 15 times 16, so 15 times 16 gives us 240, so this will be 240 p squared x squared. Don't forget to square the p as well. So that leaves us with our expansion of uh, 2 plus p x to the power of 6. 2 plus p x to the power of 6 is going to be given by the first term was 64 plus 192 p x plus 240 p squared x squared. Those are the first three terms in ascending powers of x. Okay, so that's the question done. Now for question number part b. Okay, now part b says given that in the expansion of 3 minus a half x, times 2 plus px to the power of 6, the coefficient of x squared is minus 3, find the possible values of p. So we've got to get back our expansion that we made earlier. So this is the expansion that I made for 2 plus px to the power of 6. And we've got to think about what happens when I multiply this with 3 minus a half x. So we're going to have 3 minus a half x times 64 plus 192 px plus 240 p squared x squared okay so now we've got to think about the coefficient of x squared okay so we've got to think about what terms will give us the coefficient of x squared in this expansion if i expand these so let's think about the x squared coefficients now if i multiply 3 by 64 that won't give me an x squared term 3 by 192 px won't give me an x squared term but 3 times 240p squared x squared will give me a um, x squared term. So I'll take that 240 multiplied by 3. That gives me 720. So I know that there's going to be 720 
P squared X squared. So I'm not going to write the X squared. I'm just like, writing the coefficients of X squared. So 3, three times 240 is 720. So 720 P squared will be one of the X squared terms. All right, now if we look at the minus a half X, if we multiply this by 64, that will be an X term. If I multiply minus a half X by, my, by 192 PX, that will be an X squared term. So we're going to take the 192 and divide it by 2, which is like multiplying by a half. And that gives us 96. So this is going to be negative 96 px. Okay. And again, if I multiply this by the next term, it won't give me an x squared term. So these are the x squared terms. And we know that the coefficient of x squared is equal to minus 3 quarters. So I can say that this must be equal to minus 3 quarters. So I can say that 720 p squared minus 96 p is equal to minus 3 over 4. Okay, so we've got to solve this equation to find the possible values of p. So let's multiply both sides by 4 to get rid of the fraction. So we're going to have uh, 96 times 4. That will give me 384. So we'll have minus, minus 384p, and that will be minus 3. I'll have 4 times 720. 720 times 4. That gives me 2,880. So I have 2,880 p squared minus 384p minus 3. So 2,880 p squared minus 384p plus 3 equals 0. Now this looks like a very strange quadratic equation to me. Yeah, okay. All right, so we've got to solve this equation now. Um, so let's go ahead. Okay, so for, so for a question like this, what I would do is I would use the quadratic formula here because it's going to be a bit difficult to, to factorize this. I think it will give you uh, rational numbers. Rational numbers, it will be rational. But to factorize this, you've got to find two numbers that multiply to give you 3 times 2,880 and add to give you minus 384. So I don't want to go through all the hassle. So you can use the quadratic formula quite easily here to solve this. So we can say that, uh, you know, the quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So a, b, and c are the coefficients of these, you know, um, variables. This term, in this case, it's p. So you're going to say, in this case, it will be p equals. This is p equals. So we're going to uh, replace the, the, the a here with minus 384 so here we can say a is minus 384 and b is um sorry what am i talking about a is a coefficient of p squared which is uh, 2880 and b is a coefficient of p which is minus 384 and c is the co is the constant which is three so we'll say p equals plus e equals minus b so minus 300 minus minus 384 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be minus 384 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2,880, times c, which is minus 308, uh, sorry, times c, which is 3, minus 4 times 2,880 times 3, b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a, over 2 times 2,880. So if I stick this in my calculator, I will get the two values of P eventually. So I'm going to put a minus, minus, that's plus, so it's going to be 384. I'll start with the plus, the square root of, um, again, this is going to become 384 squared. It doesn't matter, the minus is going to become positive anyway. Minus 4 times 2,880 times... 3 divided by 2 times 2880 2 times 2880 and that gives us 1 over 8 so that, as I mentioned I thought it was going to be rational so p equals 1 over 8 or p equals the other value when I use a minus in this place so I'll just go back to here and change this into minus the square root of so go all the way back to here and I change this to a minus. So that's the minus part, which will give me 1 over uh, 120. So 1 over 120. So those are the two possible values of P. 
such that the coefficient of x squared is minus 3 quarters. Okay, so that looked a bit complicated here. I was like thinking, hold on, am I, am I on the wrong tracks here? But in the end, our answer comes out to something which kind of makes it, you know, sensible again. So we could have factorized, but that would have taken a long time to find the coefficients, um, you know, to, to whether we split the middle term or use the, use the grid. We have to find two numbers that multiply to give us 2,880 times 3 and add to give us minus 384. Now, that's not really something that's too easy to do. So that's why I decided to use the quadratic formula. It makes life a lot easier in these type of questions. And it's perfectly fine to use it. Um, but you should show a method of using something like factorizing or using the formula. Don't just put this into your calculator. Okay, uh, you can do that as a check if you want to. So using this function here, okay, which is a lot of students do use it, sometimes will cause you to have problems. All right, so this is not the function, sorry. The function is this one here, equation function. And then you go to, um, in this case, polynomial, press 2. And then you say it's a quadratic, press 2. And then you put the coefficient of, of um, you put basically A as 2880, 2880. And you press equals, and then minus 384, the coefficient, the, the value of B. And then you press equals, and you press the value of C, and you press equals. And then we press equals again, it will give you a solution. And then you press equals again, it will give you the other solution. As you can see, we got them both. And it also gives you other things like the minimum point and so on. Okay? The minimum x and y values. All right? However, using that is only good for checking your answers. All right? It's not good for um, basically, you know, you know, just putting, if you just write the answer down, Without showing the steps of factorizing or using the formula, you will definitely, definitely lose marks. So don't just get tempted to use a calculator and do what I just did there. You have to show your steps. If you don't show those steps, you will definitely, definitely lose marks for sure. All right? So that must be shown. You can use that as a check to make sure. If you want to be confident that you've got the right answer, no problem. But don't just write your answer down without these steps. Okay, so there's the answer for part B of question number four. And um, if you would like to see other questions from this paper, click on the link over here. Other questions from uh, binomial expansion from P2, click on this link. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking over here. And on the top of the paper, you'll find another P2 paper you might want to watch. Thank you for watching and see you soon.